Donna Breton is a 29-year-old pregnant nurse from Pennsylvania who, after reading the package insert on a flu vaccine, she decided to dig a little bit deeper. And what she found gave her cause for concern for the health of her unborn child. Well, when she presented this evidence to her employer at the hospital for a reason to opt out of the flu vaccine, they decided to fire her instead. Adriana joins us with her son, Weston, <laughs> hiding there behind her. <laughs> so, Adriana, if you, just, if you wouldn't mind just briefly telling the viewers about what happened. I found out I was pregnant the end of October. Um, I had miscarried twice before this, and immediately upon finding out I was pregnant, I went to my employer, um, human resource representative, and told her I would need help. Hey, buddy. Told her I would need help in in getting an exemption for the flu vaccine. Um, I, they had started a mandatory policy that all employees, all healthcare employees, receive a, a the flu vaccine. Um, and I knew that there were the reasons for exemption, so I asked her to assist me in getting an exemption form and was immediately told that if I did not receive the flu vaccine, I would be it would be considered my resignation. And so had you have you taken the flu vaccine before for work? Was this a policy that was just implemented this year? It has been a policy of the hospital for the past two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the mandatory policy has been in effect. It was heavily encouraged before that, but I I have never been in a department that it's been mandated for. So this is the first year it's been mandatory for me. So did you think that it was going to be this big of an issue when you refused to take the vaccine? Honestly, no. I had done my research on the flu vaccine, and while I agree that there's good purpose for the flu vaccine, the label itself says that it's not studied in pregnant women or in nursing mothers. Um, in my first year as a nurse, I took care of a patient who received, who obtained Guillain-Barre syndrome after getting the flu vaccine, which is a known side effect, um, albeit rare. It's it's a known side effect of the flu vaccine. So in my in my train of thought, if that can happen to a grown human being, what could it do to a growing fetus? And I am a healthy individual and take good care of myself and um, thought it was more important to me, sorry, it was more important for me to avoid the flu vaccine than to avoid the flu. And um, it's important to protect my patients as well. That's very important to me. And I offered to wear a, a mask during the whole flu season, um, which would protect my patients very adequately against the flu, and not only the flu, but other viruses as well. And so how did you feel knowing that there was an exemption in place? There were other people at the hospital who were allowed to wear the masks if they were allergic to anything that was in the flu shot or if they had a religious reason for not wanting to take the shot. How did you feel when they said that your concerns over your unborn child weren't valid? That was very frustrating to me. And I had many people come to me and say, why don't you just say it's for religious reasons that you don't want the flu vaccine? And my response was, because that's not true. It is not a part of my religious belief or a part of my denomination that we don't receive the flu vaccine. Um, I'm not against other people getting the flu vaccine, but this was important to me. This is what I felt was, was important to protect my baby, to protect myself. Um, there are a lot of unknowns. And when I asked my doctor, what does this do to the baby? There are ingredients in the, in the flu vaccine, such as formaldehyde and, and mercury. What does that do to the growing baby? I wasn't given an answer because the studies aren't done. So it was very frustrating to me that I felt like, and I had looked at several studies and had scientific research that I presented to the hospital saying, here's my reasoning for for abstaining from the flu vaccine, yet somebody can come and say, I just don't believe that I should give, you know, inject those things into my body, and that's okay. It, that, that was frustrating to me. That was very frustrating to me. Right, that's what's, I mean, you're, you're bringing them actual scientific proof, and you've had firsthand experience with someone who had an adverse reaction to the flu shot, so you're coming from a very, you know, scientific point of view, which makes a lot of sense. It is quite frustrating. Do you think that they were trying to make an example out of you or, you know, Perhaps. prove something? Perhaps. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know if other people were fired. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there were. That hasn't come to my attention. But um, I do. 
Um, that was very frustrating to me. And and I do understand their position in wanting to tell the public that they are doing everything they can to protect the flu, but I felt like I offered a win-win situation in offering to wear the mask for all patient contact, which would, which would you know, do exactly what the flu vaccine would do and more. Um, so now, obviously, it's the holidays, and they went ahead with their, their threat to sort of terminate you if you didn't go ahead and get the flu shot. Is it something that you would reconsider now? Would you get the flu shot at this point? No. Uh, I, I knew this, the stakes were high when we made the decision to do this, and we made the decision as a family. We really believe we're doing the right thing and have faith that the right thing will happen for us. Um, I don't know what that is, and it's kind of a scary place to be in right now, not having a job. And we depend on, on my income, and we have a mortgage, and it is Christmas time. And it's also the challenge of going out now into the workforce, um, you know, asking people to hire me and knowing that, you know, I'm going to be leaving on maternity leave in a few months. So that, that presents a challenge as well, but I wouldn't do anything differently. I stand by my decision and believe firmly that I did the right thing. And what were some of the, what did some of your patients say, or, or maybe some other fellow nurses? I did not bring this up with any patients at all. So as far as I know, they don't know about it unless they've heard about it through somebody else. Um, the nurses that I work with were all in support of me. I had so much support. I was very overwhelmed by the support, and I had a lot of people stand beside me and, and um and went to the superiors and said, we disagree with this decision. And so that was all very, um, very touching at least. And to know that people were in agreement with me and understood where I was coming from. And have there been any other nurses that you are aware of that have refused to take this flu shot for the same reasons or? No, not that I am aware of. I'm, I'm not, I've spoken with many nurses who have said, you know, I never wanted to get the flu vaccine. It's not something I've ever done before, but because it's a mandatory policy now, I was in fear for my job and I chose to get the vaccine. I've heard a lot of people say that, but ultimately the fear of losing their job is, you know, a greater fear than, than taking the flu vaccine. Right, that seems to be the thing that you should be more concerned with your job than your unborn child. And, and yeah, it might be rare to have an adverse reaction, but I would just hate for it to be my child to be that one in a million chance. I think as a mother, that's, you know, the most important thing you can do is be concerned. Absolutely. I mean, then we're, the, the minute you find out you're pregnant, you're doing everything you can to take good care of your body. And I'm very conscientious of what I'm exposed to and what I eat. And this to me isn't any different. I'm just making the best decisions I can make in the moment. Exactly. Well, is there anything that you want to say to anyone out there that might be in the same position as you, that it might be something that's mandatory for them or someone who is, who is concerned about taking the flu vaccine? Stand your ground. If it's something you, you feel strongly about, stand your ground because this is a big battle to fight and people are scared of it, but it's not going to be fought if no one chooses to fight it. It's never going to be one if no one chooses to fight it. So um, I would just say, you know, just stand up for what you believe in and what you feel is right. And that's the only way that we can get our voices out there and possibly make a difference. Exactly. We've got to reclaim the right to <laughs> do what we want to do with our with our bodies and, and take control of our own health. Right. Not give that to someone else. Well, Driana, thank you so much for sharing your story. My and pleasure. You guys have a great holiday. Thank you. You do the same. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that is just an incredible story. I can't believe Driana, she could have lied. She could have said, you know, I, I file a religious exemption or I'm allergic to this shot. But instead, she educated herself. She read the package insert and she brought all of that information to her employers, brought them facts to say, hey, I'd like to protect my unborn child. That's my number one concern. And rather than lie and keep her job, she decided to tell the truth and she was punished for it. And it's, it's crazy. And there are still so many people out there that are in the same profession or in similar professions who are facing the possibility of losing their jobs if they don't follow through with a forced vaccination. 
So we, we really all need to just rally and stand our ground and support people like Drayana Breton who claim their liberty. We have the rights to, to protect our health and the health of our unborn children. So thank you all very much for tuning in to tonight's show and then tune in over the holidays because Alex Jones is gonna be in studio sharing some of his favorite interviews from 2013. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick. It has really good caffeine in it. It has a good, clean wake-up that lasts for a long time. Doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth. It's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The mandatory policy has been in effect. It was heavily encouraged before that, but I I have never been in a department that it's been mandated for. So this is the first year it's been mandatory for me. So did you think that it was going to be this big of an issue when you refused to take the vaccine? Honestly, no. I had done my research on the flu vaccine, and while I agree that there's good purpose for the flu vaccine, scene, um, and I knew that there were the reasons for exemption, so I asked her to assist me in getting an exemption form and was immediately told that if I did not receive the flu vaccine, I would be it would be considered my resignation. And so had you have you taken the flu vaccine before for work? Was this a policy that was just implemented this year? It has been a policy of the hospital for the past two years. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause for concern for the health of her unborn child. Well, when she presented this evidence to her employer at the hospital for a reason to opt out of the flu vaccine, they decided to fire her instead. Driana joins us with her son, Weston, <laughs> hiding there behind her. <laughs> so Driana, if you just, if you wouldn't mind just briefly telling the viewers about what happened. I. Diana Breton is a 29-year-old pregnant nurse from Pennsylvania who, after reading the package insert on a flu vaccine, she decided to dig a little bit deeper. And what she found gave her... found out I was pregnant the end of October. Um, I had miscarried twice before this. And immediately upon finding out I was pregnant, I went to my employer, um, human resource representative, and told her I would need help... Hey, buddy. Told her I would need help in 
in getting an exemption for the flu vaccine. Um, I, they had started a mandatory policy that all employees, all healthcare employees, receive a, a the flu vaccine.